Hey everyone, and welcome to Backseat Sports. I'm Josh, that is Caleb, and today, ooh, we got a big week in Husker football. We're talking about recruiting, and we got the official recruiting classes essentially locked in stone, at least the ones that have already signed, with hopefully some more on the way as well, especially when it comes to the transfer portal over the next few months. But we're going to be going through all of that today, breaking down the biggest names, and talking about the potential QB battle that Nebraska now has, and of course, talking about the, the guys that we've lost in the transfer portal and the compare and contrast of talents at Nebraska. So this is going to be a very interesting video. Caleb, how you doing? Man, I'm doing great. Merry almost Christmas and happy holidays of course. to everybody. And hey, like you said, we got some Christmas presents for Nebraska Cornhusker football and coming in the form of some players. Of course. Of uh, course. Yeah, and I'd say, you know, going right off, Matt Rule did a good job. I think him and staff kind of rebounding kind of what we had going on with the class yeah, with the cards we were, they were dealt you know obviously with all the turmoil too with mickey joseph i mean yeah it was a tough situation yeah. to, to recruit in yeah scott frost last year too didn't have really a great recruiting class coming into this year no because we the writing was on another, the wall <laughs> yes and so we had kind of another stinker kind of lined up and uh you know we've kind of made that into uh something better here we're definitely very respectable right now we're like 32nd um, according to 24-7 Sports, it rivals likes us even better, and that's great. Malachi Coleman, I'm sure all of you guys saw the video of him. He was kind of the, the big name for us, uh, 95 overall, you know, ranking uh, 84th in the country uh, player. You saw the coaches freak out, react on Twitter. They all had like a watch party for the commitment. That was great to see. We all saw the, the Twitter emojis from Matt Rule that have been firing off as yeah, figuring it out, reading the hieroglyphics from I mean, our head coach. It's, that's the issue with the, the, how coaches can talk about it. It's like you have to have all these sublime tweets nowadays mm. with the recruiting process. But yeah, I mean, I'm with you. It is fascinating. I think, uh, you know, obviously Rule broke down the press conference, had had a lot of different things to say. Um, it was Some really interesting, things. interesting overall, for sure. And the biggest emphasis on the press conference was like, he wants to build the system around the players, not the players around the system. And so he wants to have a very flexible system with those things. And it's going to be fascinating, obviously. I think the, the, the most, maybe one of the most interesting he said it was about the offensive line and his thoughts about this offensive line. Yes. Wow. Surprising. Matt Rule said he's not convinced the O-line was the problem. We're going to have a good O-line next season. That was in quotes. Hmm. Uh, man, good. I like I the confidence. Oh, yeah, me too. Good is kind of subjective, I guess. We'll see what happens. I am definitely not convinced as we had four offensive linemen commits. Not that O-line for this season. You know, not that this class doesn't really affect us. Usually, you know, you don't have a freshman that's just going to get plugged yeah, in on the offensive almost line. Never. But again, not that positive. Again, all from Nebraska. Um, just kind of three-star guys. And there's no quick fix. We, haven't, we didn't hit any offensive linemen in the portal either. So... Again, we're, that's just working with what we got. And I think all of us <laughs> feel that what we may have is not the we best. We don't have anything. So, yeah. There's so. our problem. We'll have lots more talk about that in a second. So, like you yes. said, when it comes to the rankings, 27th on Rivals and uh, fourth in the Big Ten on Rivals, uh, only behind OSU, Penn State, and Michigan. And then 32nd on 24-7. So, fifth in the Big Ten behind OSU, Penn State, Michigan, and MSU. So, a fairly respectable recruiting class, at least by the numbers, when it comes to uh, especially considering, like we said, what Matt Rule had to work with and the situation coming in about a month of recruiting all. Obviously, for almost every single year for the past, what, decade and a half, or at least since we joined the Big Ten, we've out, we've out recruited Iowa, Wisconsin, and it hasn't meant much. So, you know, there's always a grain of salt with any of these numbers, but it is a really interesting class overall. So, I mean, 10 of the players were uh, kept through the commitment, even through the coaching change, and Rule and the staff added nine of their own. Rule really had kind of emphasized speed in his personnel. He got some guys from Texas. We'd already seen that connection um, also kind of get through. Bryce Turner was kind of the first one of the class, uh, and he was just the speedster. Wasn't didn't have any stars. And then ended up they gave him a three star. You all know how this goes. Uh, you know they're kind of low. They get signed to a big school. They bump up their ratings. It's it's the classic tale. Um, but I'm excited to see what he can do. Um, as he won a bunch of stuff. Uh, they're also again. Uh, Matt Rule was talking about Jalen Lloyd, how like he'd been getting calls from uh, the assistant coach, like, hey, we need to sign this guy. And um, yeah, he was the fastest 100 meter sprinter at in Nebraska with a 10.43, which is 
that's speedy. So yeah, very exciting stuff. Yeah, it's actually been really interesting to kind of see the development of the class. I mean, obviously, it was looking real bad like two weeks ago. And then Ooh. with Malachi Coleman recommitting, which was obviously ginormous considering his ranking and his talent. Um, and considering <laughs> what our receiving core looks like right now without Trey Palmer, which we'll talk about a little bit more in, in, in a little bit. But one thing that Rule emphasized was that he doesn't inherently prioritize positions in recruiting, that he's, he's really about finding the most talented guys, and then they'll find the positions for the talent as time goes on, whether that means that they can change their players' positions or change the formations to match the talent and personnel that they have when it comes to having talented players. So like, like, we, like he said, very flexible, and he wants to build that system around the talent that he has developed and found in the recruiting portal. So it was interesting to hear his comments on the debate of transfers versus recruits and how to focus the energy and how to build a roster. And he says he'd much prefer to build rosters with guys that have been there for at least two to three years versus bringing in these one-off type of players every single year to fill the voids. Like he'd hope that eventually long-term, of course, you can build a roster where you don't necessarily need those guys year in and year out. And he'd rather not disrespect the guys who've worked so hard in their program and bring in those guys unless it's like absolutely necessary. But um, overall, I we'll think see how that goes. I, don't, I, I do agree, but I think just with the nature of college football, like I just don't think that's a possibility anymore. I mean, I think maybe sometimes with... Some players, like, I get, if you have a good program, quarterbacks like the Alabamas the or, yeah, exactly, because you can just have instant, I mean, we're in a good spot, at least with quarterback at Nebraska's, where we can, we're in one of the positions where we, we're kind of the halves, we're like, again, we'll talk about, you know, Sims, but it's like, he could have gone somewhere else, like, we're not a guaranteed start with Casey, and he could have gone, you know, a lot of other teams in the Big Ten, but because we're Nebraska and you make that money and everything else. Uh, we're, we're much more attractive, which is a great spot to be in. As the system or the transfer system falls more into place and it's more obvious exactly how like the smaller schools deal with transfers and how players deal with transfers. I mean, my goodness, any school that's a non-power five school has no chance of holding on to any of their most talented players at this point. I mean, it's it's just not going to happen. Like, the tampering is going to be <laughs> real unless yeah. you can police it too. And I mean, Matt Rule was already talking about that in this press conference. Like he feels like the tampering is insane already. And, oh, dude, yeah, it's ridiculous. And so it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out. It's going to be very dangerous for those teams where, you know, you're in a good program, uh, but like you, you've you kind of faltered on expectations. Like say Clemson next year again kind of misses the mark. You know, maybe then some people want to go the other way. I think that any program that's kind of middling or again, even our position with Nebraska, like Ernest Hossman, where it's like, okay, well, I could go somewhere else. Like as for Huskers recruiting class again, it's it's gonna be interesting to see. I mean, again, it, with the the multiple four stars here, uh, when it comes to, I think we really want to focus this video on the impact players, the guys that we're actually gonna see play this season. And generally, that only refers to wide receivers, running backs, and quarterbacks as generally the freshmen who actually end up seeing the field any significant portion of time, unless you have no one. At the linebacking core, and then after five weeks, everyone's hurt, and Ernest Hospin comes in, and you actually have a starting yes. true freshman. In a in a good program with enough depth, you would never see a freshman on, you know, at least in most programs, unless they're like five stars or something like that, starting first year. So it is going to be interesting. But I mean, you know, outside of like, of course, Malachi Coleman, you know, we brought in like Prince Will Uman Milan, who was the edge rusher from Texas. The, the four star and then Riley Van Poppel as well from Texas, the four star D lineman. Do you see any world where they we could see the they could see the field next year in a pass rushing situation or things like that? Or is, or is I mean, again, world? we're kind of so depleted right now. I think that there's a real possibility uh, again, if, if the talent isn't there. I mean, I think our defensive line isn't the worst spot. I think, you know, like if Garrett says he's probably coming yeah. back and uh, I think that we'll be actually okay on the defensive line where they're probably not going to see that many snaps. So, um, yeah, I'm not sure how much of an impact they'll be to start. Yeah. Unless, of course, injuries. Injuries are always, it's a great equalizer. For so. sure. I mean, yeah. So, I mean, we're, we're about to talk about transfers, but I mean, there is some other guys that we're still waiting on here when it comes to recruiting. And so, it's yeah. like four-star Cameron Lenhard. Looked like we're going get, to get him here. So, he's projected to go our way, at least right now. And then, of course, as well, four-star wide receiver Omari and Miller. Currently, we're still the crystal ball favorite uh, over LSU for him. Uh, and he, but he was heavily recruited by Mickey Joseph. So I don't think it would surprise anyone if he ends up going the other way. But I, I think it's very possible we end up with him as well. Also, three star cornerback Ethan Nation is kind of the other one where we might possibly get him as well. Uh, and again, if we got all three of those guys, I would really boost the class even more. Mm -hmm. 
that would be great. But yeah, I'm, I'm not sure if Omarion's going to end up coming here. And then now going into the transfers and kind of the surprising one now that I guess most people think the that spiciest one is going to stay is quarterback Jeff Sims. His highlight reels are exciting to watch, no doubt. Uh, the Georgia Tech quarterback, he's thrown for 4,464 yards, 30 touchdowns, and 23 interceptions in his career. He's got two seasons of eligibility remaining with that COVID year. And uh, this brings in kind of a quarterback battle between uh, Casey and him and uh, some interesting yeah. comments by both camps at this point. Well, I mean, you and, can't uh, talk about Jeff Sims without talking about his legs. I mean, he has almost 1,200 mm -hmm. rushing yards in his career and 11 rushing touchdowns. And um, obviously, that's where he's most Those dangerous options. is on the ground Yeah, with the read options. And uh, he torched a lot of teams doing that. He left Georgia Tech because Jeff Collins was fired. And a he was also injured last season, so there's a bunch of different issues there with starting quarterback. And so with a new regime and all of those things considered, it makes sense that he was looking for another option. But again, like you said, it is surprising he ends up choosing Nebraska when it looks like all signs point to Casey Thompson being the favorite to be the starting quarterback still. That comes off the shoulders of uh, Casey Thompson being hurt and having shoulder surgery. And so we had, a, like you said, quite a few statements from his father about uh, the potential of him staying in Nebraska and where we're at with the quarterback position. Yeah, I think the most interesting quote from him was, just so the record shows, we're aware that we're going to take, we knew that Nebraska was going to take either a high school or a portal quarterback. I know a lot of people wonder what our thoughts on Sims are. Our thought is, welcome to the room, but we came to Nebraska to play, not to watch. Always a little so weird when the dad's talking for the son. Yes, but. it is. It <laughs> is. I respect uh, it, though. Sims says, you know, I'm coming here and I have to compete. Uh, I would have to do that anywhere. So I'm excited to meet the guys, build relationships. They've both been starting quarterbacks for multiple seasons. So I think both have expectations that they're coming in to start. And Rule did pick Sims. You know, Casey staying. Yeah. Obviously, I think Casey is very talented. Arm I mean, again, super good. He got injured this last season. I think it's great having two awesome quarterbacks on the roster because we saw what happened last year at Nebraska win. Casey went down because of our O-line. Chubba or Logan Smothers just was not going to do it. So I think that the, they might both see the field at some point. Just well, yeah. If our offensive line hasn't changed. I mean, again, there's there's going to be six. At this point, there's six scholarship quarterbacks on the roster now. So it's a packed room in there. And I like like to but your four point. Of, I mean, four of them aren't even real quarterbacks, to be honest. I'm sorry. I mean, obviously, yeah. But like it is fascinating to see that like uh, like last year, I mean, with with the uh, you know, Casey Thompson's father revealing that like this, this injury happened against Oklahoma. And so he had been working through this shoulder injury all year long and then had the nerve damage in the hand. So like, yeah, he was really banged up last season and for him to play as well as he did, even that banged up is pretty impressive considering the injury required, you know, shoulder surgery. So it is fascinating. I mean, Sims, his tape is obviously really impressive. He has a great deep ball and that's the strength of his throwing game intermediate he's he's definitely questionable and he made plenty that middle of, of the field throwing scary <laughs> yeah and he made plenty of mistakes last year and he he's definitely willing to try to get that ball in there and force it and so it, it could be a little scary to watch at times but obviously on the ground he is dangerous and extremely athletic and so there is kind of the, the pros and cons there he remind he's yeah. very reminiscent of adrian martinez in a lot of ways especially senior season adrian who had the good deep ball but had absolutely no trust with und with anything under 20 yards downfield and, of course, can run well. So I, mean, I think it's going to be a legit quarterback battle. Like, genuinely, yeah. I mean, considering uh, the Rule's history. Rule's comments on Sims, too. Right, yeah. Rule's comments on Sims, and he talked about how Rule had, Rule had talked about how in the NFL he, he had heard plenty of coaches rave about Sims and the potential of, uh, that Sims had as an NFL quarterback. And um, not to mention rules history with really liking running quarterbacks guys who can, who can get those first downs with their feet and i mean as we've seen casey he can run but he's definitely not the most nimble guy out there um plenty he's of quarterbacks pass first quarterback yeah, the which, definition which i like pass first quarterback I, I think the biggest issue with sims is last year i mean he was the third worst graded qb in 2022 on pff when blitzed and sixth worst when under pressure and i mean casey wasn't great when blitzed or under pressure but he was a lot better than that but again Casey's not going to play in the spring almost almost for sure because of this surgery. And so we're going to see a yeah. lot of Sims, Sims. in yeah. the spring, in the spring game and all of these things. And so it's, there's going to be a lot of time for the coaches to really like Sims. And it's a new playbook. So, I mean, Sims is going to have a lot of advantages when it comes to waning this job. So this could be a job that comes down to the wire in fall camp.
Yeah, I 100% agree. It's exciting and it's two different philosophies and it's going to end up being which one does Matt Rule want yeah. more? Does he want does he want a dual threat quarterback? Does he want a pocket passer? And I mean, yeah, and I mean, only could, time will tell. And and there's a lot of X factors. I mean, the receiving core is going to be yes. questionable and the offensive line is going to be questionable. So it's like, which guy is going to deal better with those things? Hey, no, we're going to have a good oh, O-line next year. I'm sorry, year. I'm sorry. We're going to have a Matt. good O-line next year. <laughs> I, I still, I mean... That's the one thing I am nervous about is we got zero offensive line transfers. I mean, again, we kept the same offensive line coach. Matt Rule said that they had the same. There's three different offensive line philosophies. They both have the same philosophy and that Donovan Riola, all the players loved him and they were super loyal more than any position coach. So yeah. we'll see what happens. Obviously, it's hard to change an offensive line in one year. So so the other transfers, none of them are as interesting as Sims, to say the least. But there are some guys because a lot of them are talented, younger players that are you know highly ranked. But let's start off with here with Josh Fleeks, a receiver um, coming from Baylor, who was actually recruited by Matt Rule back in the day, and he's Crazy. he's gonna be he's had a lot of ex playing experience at this point. Five seasons at Baylor, although the last two seasons he hasn't played very much, only seven snaps mm. in 2022 and 133 snaps in 2021. But he was basically a, a starter or a heavily contributing player before that. I mean, he played in 43 games at Baylor, and inherently he seems like a very solid receiver, but nothing special. And so, I mean, at this point we need bodies, and that's the reason why he's he's on his way here. And he should be a guy yeah. that you can rely on. He's a veteran, and he's seen a lot of the field. And so inherently he's one of those guys that can just hop in there and produce when we need him to. So, I mean, there's not too much to get really excited about with Fleeks. But overall, I think you can be happy that we have a guy that should be pretty reliable. I agree. And another one that's kind of exciting is a defensive lineman, Elijah Judy. He was a four star, ranked 208th in his class from Philadelphia. He redshirted two years ago. Being from AM and being in that developmental program, it'll be interested to see what he can produce. Yeah. Then also, we got a long staffer. Shout out Marco Ortiz. We got to lock in the long staffers. And, uh, <laughs> Are you not a long snapper expert? Give me your in-depth analysis sorry, of yes. Marco Ortiz. I mean, just he's just a unit. Oh, the dude. man. Best in accurate, the game. Accurate snapper from 50 yards away. He's ridiculous. <laughs> a uh, cannon <laughs> down there. So the next one is, is Corey yeah. Collier. Um, another, again, this is kind of the theme of the transfers here at the end here, is another former four-star prospect from Miami. 2021 20, class. 106th ranked on 24-7 in 2021. And again, he began that career at Florida and then transferred to Nebraska after his official visit last week. And uh, he only appeared in four games uh, for Florida this fall, basically just special teams. And he's got one tackle. So, I mean, you know, again, there's not much to work off of here besides you're working off the, the potential of the talent from the recruiting background and you're hoping you can see it. Let's kind of go back to our earlier conversation. I think this is going to be the norm for, for college football from here on out is if you're a, a four star and you don't see much success or progress or playing time in your first year or two at a school you're going to transfer and find somewhere yep. else and so we are the beneficiaries of that with Corey collier at the least we're looking I, for special teams <laughs> playmakers you, yeah yeah our special teams right now all of our starters are out there <laughs> yes then also we got chief borders oh, lit name. uh he has one snap he's also a former four-star pro prospect you'll see this 328th at ashley from the 2021 class and then he also played special teams for Florida, and he has three seasons of eligibility left. He'll probably be an edge rusher in the 3-3-5. Matt Rule's staff seems excited about him, and again, we'll be excited to see if yeah. hopefully some of these guys like to produce for us. I know. I mean, that's the problem is that with a lot of these situations, we really need these guys to hop in and play. And so, uh, yeah. It's not like Oshan with like last year, you know, where he actually played. Right, was and like, was a legit starter and a yeah, Big 12 legit, player yeah. of the, the year and stuff like that. It's, it's definitely been a downgrade on the transfer right. portal for us this year. Yeah, so that's what we wanted to talk year. about here in the final part of the video, which is kind of the, the compare and contrast for the guys that we lost to the transfer portal or who we might lose be, be losing for the transfer portal. Obviously, there's still chances that some of these guys end up coming back if they don't find a new home. Obviously, we lost some big names in Trey Palmer and O'Shawn Mathis to, to going to the NFL draft or going to the NFL. But, you know, besides that, the, the biggest loss, of course, was Ernest Haussmann, who showed so much pot potential as a true freshman last year, playing at middle linebacker and a guy that we actually saw getting sideline to sideline. And we hadn't been seeing, it, seeing that at Nebraska for the middle linebacker position in a while. And so it was a shame yeah. that, that Michigan was able to snipe him off of our roster like that. 
Yeah, I mean, especially as the guy yeah. who he's from Nebraska too would kill her. Giant sadness. So, yeah. Also, again, I said this earlier, but Brett Banks as well. He's gone. Kevin Williams. Um, IGC would also said he was transferring and the coldest as well. Yant and Jaden Gold and Mosai Newsome. So yeah, there's also yeah, a handful a lot of others. Of those are probably the biggest ones. The big names, yeah. Like you said, offensive line, Brent, Brent losing Banks and Kevin Williams, who looked good in his time when he played before he got hurt. Yeah. Again, it's just more questions on the offensive line with with no answers. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> hey, we're gonna oh be good gosh, next year. Bad. I'm we're gonna so be good scared. next year. So it's interesting. I mean, where do you feel like? I mean, look, okay, like the receiving core replacing Trey Palmer. Do you see any other answer besides Malachi Coleman being le- like the real deal as a true freshman? Because is the answer yeah, I mean, it's gonna really? Be tough. Like Josh, I'm Fleeks? happy that Marcus Washington's most likely going to stay if Casey stays. Yeah, Alante Brown. But yeah, I mean, you don't replace somebody like that as where Nebraska is as a program. Like a game breaker like him or Wandale, like those just those guys aren't easily replaced. No. And again, the transfer portal, it just hasn't looked as good. Again, we did good for this incoming class, but I'd say the transfer portal yeah. has still been a little bit disappointing compared to last season where you get There's still you know, hope. Casey, O'Shawn, Trey, like those names like that changed our season. And as this year, you know, Sims is solid, but it's already kind of a position where we have some wealth in at this point. I think there's still a lot of hope. I mean, like last year, I think Casey Thompson transferred in January, and we'll have a lot more news happening here in January, February, yes. March. More to like, talk we about. Even yeah, had, we can still, still win the national championship in the offseason. We still had, we still had transfers after the spring game last year. So uh, there's yeah. still plenty of hope for Nebraska to find some of these guys. And I think as, I mean, the coaches have, have barely even had a chance to actually watch this team yet. So it's like... <laughs> You know, at this yeah. point, they maybe they don't even know how bad the offensive line is. <laughs> they, like, I think it's going to be interesting to see how the, their opinions change over time and what guys we end up bringing in as the off as the off season continues to move on here. Because maybe maybe we need to send them the 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 footage, the blooper reel the of blooper the offensive reel of line of tab, the tackles this season. Yeah, oh, I yeah. mean, it's, essentially, it's a thing of beauty. If I had Poetry. to put money on it, I would assume we're going to bring in at least one or two offensive linemen. And then I would assume we're hopefully going to bring in another transfer linebacker as well, because I think we're going to need it. Especially yeah. if we're going to be trying to run more three three five and stuff like that. I mean, my goodness, we're going to really need it at that point. So overall, I'm very happy with it. I think we already talked about these things. So um, drop your comments down below. We want to hear what your guys' thoughts are. What are your the biggest wins? Your opinions on on the Sims versus Thompson QB debate, Ooh. and who you think is going to be a starter next year, and how you feel about Matt Rule at this point and the coaching staff and how they've approached building this roster. But as always, guys, yes. I'm Josh. That's Caleb. This has been Backseat Sports, and we will see you next time. Go Big Red. Go Big Red. Merry Christmas.